The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. Well, we've got some action going, folks. I mean, I'm hoping that Tom's doing a great job, as he always does, doing his live program. But my goodness, you certainly got a, uh, a lot of volatility going on, for sure. Uh, I posted a chart of the NASDAQ. Uh, this is where the problem started. As you can see here, that 382 retracement that we, uh, that we were looking at. Uh, right in here, we stopped, rallied up, we had those lower tops, and that was it. Uh, uh, that's basically it. I, the fact is, uh, this will be my last day for a while, folks. I'm, I, I need a break badly, and I'm taking it. We're going to see volatility like we've never seen before. Here's what I think is going on, folks. I showed you the NASDAQ, but the one that we were following the most closely, of course, was the E-mini S&P, and I, I, I tried to reinforce to everybody yesterday when I was on the show that this number that we were looking at here at uh, 4050 uh, the 382 retracement you'll see that we finally made it remember now we made it here in the NASDAQ but then we came down and made a newer one and I, I mentioned when we go below that folks oh dear be very very careful because that means that the whole operation has changed and I'll give you my two cents worth and all, all it's related to is numbers, folks. That's all it really is. Okay, now the first one we're going to look at here is uh, we'll start out, I think we'll start out with Apple. And the reason why we'll start out with Apple is because it's pretty indicative of everything that's going on in the market. So here's where we are. We'll get this up here. And, and this looks just like the S&P, folks. Just looks like the Dow Jones. You know, they all look alike. And this is Apple. And I think this is the real key here that we want to watch because there's the there's the ABCD right at the exact 382. But the problem is, folks, you see this little three-week rally here? That was an exact 382. And that was one of the reasons why we were saying be very, very careful in here because these markets have a tendency to when they turn and they're bearish, look out. And this is certainly one of those times, so we'll be watching it. Uh, with the fine tooth comb here uh, very, very closely. Now you'll see here that we had the first 382 retracement was right here. And then we had the second 382 retracement. This was the 10 day high. And now we're down here at below 138 already. That's really a bad sign, folks. We go below here, folks. That's trouble in River City. And I might have to uh, come back and. Uh, you know, get get involved with this a little bit, but frankly, I, 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 there's so much coming that I don't even want to worry about. Folks, just to give an example today, we've had an eighty dollar swing in gold, we've had a seven dollar, seven thousand dollar swing in treasury bonds. I mean, these are monster swings. There's people out there that are finally getting scared, folks, and that's where you've got to really, uh, really look. Just look at gold here today, folks. And uh, believe me, this was. Uh, hold on one second. We'll get this up here. Uh, to take a look at. By the way, our guest today is Shane Smolian, wolftrader.com. Look at that. There's your ABCD on the gold to the downside. You can see the beautiful garley that we had up here to sell it at 58. You know, it had uh, 30 bucks in it. And look, it went all the way back and made the 61% retracement of the whole move from back at uh, 1910. I mean, this is, uh, this is volatility in spades. And we have a caller from uh, Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Again, it's Keith. Keith, how are you? I'm good, Larry. Thank you for taking the call. What can I do for you, my a, friend? Well, I'm wondering, um, the target you have on Monday for the big event, if you will. Yeah. Do these cycles, in, in, do they invert? Have you seen that happen? Oh, yeah, they're uh, going to be a high or a low. And since we're coming down so sharply, this will most probably be some type of a low. 
Uh, we've got a big lunar cycle. I've, hey, we've got Shane Smolian on at the break, so he'll answer all these questions for you. But um, oh, okay. you know, we'll you know whether they'll do it or not. You know, Keith, I live and die by my ratios and ABCDs. That's what I use. I I, I know the astrology is mm -hmm. great. I've looked at it. You know, I have to have smart people like Shane and Tim Bost and Norm Winsky and others that come on. Uh, and show us what they're doing, but you know, I I look at what what I have to do with the patterns as far as A B C D. That leads me to the promised land, and believe me, I don't fall for any of the factors. If you remember, a year two years ago, they were telling us that interest rates were going to go to zero, zero interest rates. You were going to have to pay mm -hmm. them for holding the money. These folks are sitting there; they're not doing too good right now. You know, and yeah. that's why I, I can't listen to the news when they try to feed me that stuff because uh, I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I wait till that knife hits the ground before I pick it up. I'll tell you that. Well, you're too modest. Well, um, modesty, <laughs> that's just my, my modesty is my middle name. <laughs> not really. <laughs> um, can I ask you another one? Sure, please. My work is showing the cues. Uh, Getting down a, an A B equals C D down to two sixty. Yeah. Um, are, are you on kind of on board with that too? Oh, like very. If we take out the lows of May twentieth. Easily, we can easily make that. That's not a hard hard number to make because, you know, this has been the weakest markets of all. Uh, it couldn't even make a 382 retracement on this last rally. We did it in the Dow, we did it in the S and P, but the Nasdaq was not able to do it, and that's telling you that it was still weak. And uh, so that's it. The key this week is we've had these lower tops all week long after hitting the 382 retracement, you know, exactly uh -huh. in the S&P, exactly in the Dow. And it just kept rolling it over. And once we went below 4060, they turned out the lights. And, you know, we're trying 160 handles in, in two days. And that's the, the real key to what we're looking at, you know. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Well, hopefully we can get some fear in this market. Well, it's it's the fears there. I'm gonna the next one. I I'm gonna let you go now, but I'm gonna post you yep. what I was looking at today because you know one of the things that we teach here. Stay with me, Keith. You're right here, so we'll just do this together, and we'll mm -hmm. get this up here to take a quick look at it. This is the E mini S and P on a two minute chart, and you're gonna be able to see here uh, right after the report we had the big break. Now the first thing we say after a big break is look for a three eight two retracement. Bada bing, there was a first mm -hmm. one. Bada bing, there was the third one. Drum roll. Can you give me a drum roll, Keith? I've got one more to show you. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> only in America can you do stuff like this. Okay. And and not only to get and not even get paid for it. That's the best part of it. Let's get up here to take a look at it. Now here it is, the third time, folks. The third time that it's hit three eight two. That last number, folks, was thirty nine twenty three. Now, as long as we don't get above 39.23, we're heading lower. But if we should happen to pop above 39.23, that's the possibility that we might be getting our first rally. And we'll have to see, you know, what the market's going to be doing. It's 39.08 now, so it's got a, quite a ways to go before 39.23. But that's giving you the indications that we're in big trouble in some of these markets. When you see a, a the bond market, which is the godmother of all safeties, moving $7,000, I mean, it was – down a thousand, up two thousand, down three thousand. Are you kidding me? I mean, this is a bond market. It's supposed to be safe. Hey, Keith, thanks for calling in, buddy. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thank you, Larry. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Bye bye. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Monk Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this 
combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I posted the chart of the uh, uh, natural gas showing also the 382 retracement and that one works pretty good. But I did want to show you this is the cash S&P. Uh, the high we made this past week was exactly at the 382 level. And we have a caller on the line, Greg from New Hampshire. What can we do for you, my friend? Uh oh, hello, Greg, are you there? I think I've lost uh, connection, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, he must have hung up. Well, maybe he'll call back. But anyway, this 382 retracement, what's so important about this, folks, is that if we break that, oh, dear heaven, that is such a terrible negative thing. And, you know, we're not very far away. We're less than 100 handles away in the S&P. Uh, the old low was 3810. We got down to 3906. I don't know where we're going to close. We closed really badly today, like down to 11 to 1200 points in the Dow Jones. For God's sakes, don't be short over the weekend because uh, there could be something really, uh, really negative out there. I don't know what it would be. Now, there's also the possibility that uh, Putin might send up a white flag. The odds of that happening are as the Chance Brothers coming over the celeste horizon there, slim and none. But uh, I don't think that's going to happen. But there's going to be great opportunities. Uh, even intraday today, look at this. I mean, just look at these 382 retracements that we talk about. I mean, they've just been uh, lining up just really nicely. Uh, the only one that didn't work, of course, was this last one in gold. Uh, you know, we had a really nice move down of well over uh, $3,000 uh, in the gold contract, and then it went back and made a 61% retracement of the whole range, folks. That's $100 moves in gold in one day. They don't do that very easily. I mean, give me a break. I mean, that that's really wild volatility. So we've got to be able to, you know, worrying about it. We've got Pedro from Park City. Peter, how are you? I'm doing great, Larry. Are you definitely going to be missed over the next few weeks? Yeah, yeah. Um, I know. Hey, I yeah, just wanted yeah, to, yeah, I wanted yeah, to sure. like, <laughs> my overall bigger picture on this is you've often said that 0.382 moves in bear markets are, are typical within bear markets and the 382s have been trading great. Yes. 
As I yes. see it, we've come down from 4808 to 3807, so 1,000 yep. points. We bounce the 3.382 basically to 4200. Yep. And it looks to me like we're setting up, you know, maybe over the next month or two at least, um, for 3200 or even an extension of that when you do, you know, yes. since you've only retraced 0.382, uh, maybe a 1.272 or 1.618. And I just wondered uh, what your thoughts were on that. I, I agree with you 100%, Peter. The reason why uh, that is so important, we had Stan Harley on at the beginning of the week, and he talked about Walt Bressert's work, which is high translation. In other words, the market peaks early in a cycle. So if you have a 382 that only happens in 10 days, and it should have taken three weeks, and then it breaks that, that's high translation to the left, and that is extremely bearish. All it needs to do is to break below that low, and that's going to be uh, – that, that's when you're going to see the Dow moving. We will see a move in the Dow here sometime between now and the 4th of July of 2,000 points in one day. The reason why uh, that's the number, we've seen 1,100 uh, several times. You multiply that times your one point – excuse me, 1,900 times your – let me get the numbers right. You multiply 1.618 times the largest move we've had in the Dow so far, which is 1,200. That gets you yep. to 2,000 points down in the Dow. So we'll see that sometime between now and the 4th of July. Uh, that's only, you know, two and a half weeks, so we'll see that. But we're going to great, – great opportunities are coming. No matter what happens, no, we're going to have tremendous totally uh, rallies. Yeah, no, again, thank you for all you do. Get some rest. Prop your feet uh -oh. up. Yeah, and we'll see you soon. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I love you, Peter. Take it easy, buddy. I All love right. Park City. I, I I was there in 1980 um, when the oh, I would move on to the next one. We got another question coming in here. Okay. Uh, that we thanks, Peter, for calling in. I really yep. appreciate it. Okay, folks, let's get the next one up here that I want to take a quick look at. So you can see, I posted this one of the S and P cash, and that tells you if we go below those lows of March 20th, folks, uh, that's really. Uh, Let's try it again, Larry. May 20th, that, that's really, uh, uh, that's really what's uh, super, super important here. But we were, we were starting out the week for – let's move on to something that I can talk about with a little bit of uh, excitement, and that here is the crude oil contract. We'll get this up here so you can look at it. This is one of the videos that we sent out last night saying there was going to be a really high probability. Well, I'm talking about 60% that this high that we made here, you see that high, that was an exact – 78% retracement. 78 was 123.11. The high that we made last night was 123.18. We dropped $3,000, $3 a barrel so far down into that. And if you want to do some, have some fun, why don't you put in the old 382s on the crude oil and see how they held up? Because that little puppy works, folks. It really does. Don't mind sharing it. You know why? Most people don't want to do the work, and I'm okay with that. You know, that's the way it is. That's their, that's their right. That's their prerogative. So uh, some people like chocolate cake. Some people like strawberry cake, and some people don't like cake at all. So you got to decide which of that group you are and trade what you see and not what you think. And if you do that, you're going to be okay. These ABCDs don't work all the time, but they work a heck of a lot more then they fail, and that's the real beauty of it. Look at this week, folks. I mean, just stop and think where we were at the beginning of the week. Let's just get this up here. And this was a real easy – I mean, we talked – well, but never mind. Don't make any difference. Okay, here is the picture of this for the week. You'll see we have lower tops all the way through here, okay? Look where we are now, folks. We're off the page to the downside. You know, once this low was break broken – this is when we broke the 4060, folks – when we broke that in the S&P, that said, you know, we're, we're heading lower. And it did it late in the day yesterday, and it never upticked. You could have sold 4060 and put a stop at 4061. You never would have been filled. That's how important that number was. And we've got Greg on the line from New Hampshire. Greg, what can we do for you? Hi. Good morning, Larry. Just wanted to say hi, long-time listener, long-term long student. And uh, just was looking at gold on a short term, if you could take a look at that. Oh, my goodness. Why don't you give me something that's easy? I'll bring this chart up, folks, because this is not an easy chart to look at. But I, I have was watching that. so And it's even higher than this. I'll get this up here so that we can take a look at it. And I'll get to where we are here. Now, you'll know, Greg, if you're a listener, you know, we sold the, uh, the uh, Gartley up here at 58. 
And that went from okay. 58 all the way down to 26. That was a $3,200 move. Uh, and then, you know, I, I I hope somebody put their stops in and to get to make something. But look, look what it did. It's moved over $100 an ounce today, Greg, between down 20, up 20, down 20, and up 50. I mean, that that's a huge up, up 40. I mean, that's a hundred dollar move in gold in one day. We have taken out the highs that we made way back here at the 1158. We've been up to, I think, 63 now, 1863 or 64. Boy, that's a toughie. Look at that strength of that bar. I mean, that's uh, right. I, that, whether that's a major bottom or not, I don't know. You know, I've always said that, you know, I, I like long gold and long silver, but I thought we'd get down a lot lower in the gold. But with action like this, man, I got to respect that, partner. Well, thank you very much, Larry. Hey, thank you. Thanks for being support, too. I really appreciate it, Greg. We'll be right back with Shane Smolian, folks, wolftrader.com. <laughs> If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. We have the Wolf Trader, ShaneSmolian.com on the line. Shane, how are you doing today? Good morning, Larry. How are you today? Oh, just living the dream, baby, on the green side of the grass. What do you show for today, buddy, with this lack of volatility in the market today? <laughs> <laughs> Crazy times, for sure. Oh, well, my I, God. I just want to start out, Larry, by just thanking you for all that you do. Um, I, I certainly appreciate what you do, and I think you, we can see by the callers calling in today that you really have a lot of uh, support there. You've touched a lot of lives, and I think everybody should. I mean, I I appreciate 
uh, just what you do. And I think everybody is very lucky to have you on on a daily basis. So enjoy your break for oh, sure. Am I going to have to? Am I going to have to send you twenty dollars too? <laughs> Larry, I've been okay. listening to you for years, even before we met. And so I used to listen to you in the car when I was driving and walking. And yeah, that explains like, your accidents anyway. <laughs> Go ahead. Tell us what you're looking at, buddy. We're in the midst of a bear market here, it looks like. So what do you see? Uh, absolutely. So we're going to do a little bit S&P, and then I'm going to go into some more gold because uh, people have asked. There was actually a question about the gold, and uh, I'm going to address that, that high translation topic that you brought up with uh, with Stan Harley, too, because that that's important. Uh, well, a couple of graphs here. First of all, RK Innovations. Uh, we we have been tracking the ETFs. We've had this in a cell since February the 10th. So this is something that I like to watch because I think this is you know this is the, the new technology that leads the Nasdaq. Uh, this has just really been uh, ultra bearish, and I think we have more downside on this for sure. Uh, and I, I I had some projections down there, you know, below 20, but we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves there. The biotech sector is still pretty beat up here. This this has been in a cell in the Fed use since 225. Uh, so those are just two, two sectors I like to look at. Uh, and then the VIX, this is an interesting one. So the VIX is finally starting to get up off the bottom here. It has been falling uh, this whole time uh, while the S&P has been falling, which is a very unique situation. Uh, so finally, we're getting a little bit of a hook up here in the VIX. Notice here that we are coming into some cycle. These are cycles down here. This is a four to six day. This is a double lunar cycle here. Uh, so it, it looks as if the VIX is going to be rising here for the next next few days, at least on the short term. Uh, that, so that's interesting. At some point, the VIX has to start rising uh, for this S&P to make a, a, uh, uh, some type of a low here. So uh, this is the first chart that I have here. This is an S&P intraday. And... Um, you know, this is the, I've been calling these the poop slinging rallies, and uh, these are the rallies that that you know they try to get going and then they just collapse. And um, you can see here that the S and P has been doing very well, uh, coming up to these speed lines and dropping back to these speed lines here. Uh, so this has been very useful to to kind of find these levels of support and resistance here. And this is based upon the Fibonacci retracements. They're just speed lines. They start here and they move through. The, the the levels here, the retracement levels, but you can see that we've just been having these these horrific uh, retracements that come much quicker. So the thing that people need to realize is the the further we get into a bear market, the faster these retrace, uh, and and it's more confirmation that we are in the bear market because in the early stages of the bear market, they get retraced, but they're not as strong. But in this case, they retrace even faster, and that's the sign of the dominant trend, uh, which is down. Also. Quantitative tightening is beginning. Now, officially, this doesn't show up until about the 15th on the treasuries. But I'm showing the signs that it's already happening. And, and, and my Fed internals, I've already I've already started to show this. So uh, when we when we hit on June 1st, this is already happening. For those who don't know what this means, this is the, the way that the Fed starts to reduce their balance sheet. And there's many ways they can do it. They can do it very slowly. They can do it more aggressively. They can sell off treasuries. They can sell off mortgage-backed securities. But the bottom line is this is devastating for the S&P. And I've been talking to my subscribers about this for a while, that this is the final stage here where you get down to like you're, like you're getting down to the nerve. And so once these start to roll off, it's going to have a much, a much more profound effect on the selling pressure that's coming. Um, this is a chart here. These are the Fed internals I was talking about. I was already starting to track these declining uh, even before June into here. So this is going to continue to come down as the, the tightening begins and you can see here the QT begins here I know I have many different images here but the QT here is here I think we're in a full-on crash now on this S&P uh, and so I can't see I can't really see anything changing on this I you know if anything they're talking about a possible uh, three-quarter point rate hike now they brought that on the table all of a sudden uh, and, and to be honest with you it would not surprise me uh, because I've done the charts of the S&P next week and the S and P next week, if you take a look at this, uh, this is this is showing all of my signals in here. But on 6:15, the planetary speed index makes a sell on this uh, on the S and P here, and that's the Fed meeting. And so, I've done the charts, and there's a lot of there's there's a lot of Uranus activity in there, which is unexpected news, and there's a lot of Neptune. It's a confusing time. So whatever happens, people are going to be confused, and there's there's a possibility of two surprises coming out of that meeting. Uh, and I would not be surprised if they went higher and then they had uh, more hawkish guidance going forward. So 
Uh, it's it's a tough time right now, and and I always tell people I like to look at the astrology and the cycles. That's great, but the ultimate predictor of this market is going to be uh, what the Fed is doing. The market rises and falls on the Fed and their policy. And right now, it's it's just a very tight, tight policy on the S&P 500. So uh, I just think that, you know, this double lunar cycle comes in. And you were we, we were talking about that concept of a high translation. And one of the things that this double lunar cycle does is that's what it does. It takes into account that the left or the right translation. And this went back into a cell on 6-9, and this is going to stay in a cell for most of the month now uh, going forward. It came into a buy a couple of days here. We had a couple of good trades into there. But ultimately, this is bearish. And uh, we're coming into a time now where it's just there's just nothing there. I mean, I, I don't know how else to say it. Uh, the S&P has shown no ability to do anything without the Fed since 2009. And now we're having a situation where it's actually it, we're, we're tightening and we're getting down into this phase where, you know, they're going to start shrinking the balance sheet. So it's going to be a tough road, Larry. I mean, it's uh, you're picking an interesting time to take off here because I think we could have a lot of action in the next few weeks. Yeah, that reminds me of the, uh, well, I think it was Scarface where he says, no, that was uh, the uh, Godfather. He says, I keep trying to leave and yet they keep trying to they pull me back. They keep <laughs> pulling you back, baby. That's right. So, uh, yeah. you know, I mean, we'll see. But th this is uh, these are the statistics for next week. Tuesday is a strong day. Uh, wouldn't surprise me. You were talking about a possible bounce. It wouldn't surprise me before the Fed meeting. I mean, they 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 yeah. don't like to see uh, a crashing market when they speak. And certainly, yeah. we've seen rallies uh, every time the Fed starts to talk. Even Yellen the other day, Janet Yellen starts talking, and the market m mysteriously rallies. So, uh, wouldn't surprise me to see them try to do some more of these what I call these poop slinging rallies, where they this false hope comes out of nowhere. But ultimately, when we look at the big picture. We just have to understand the reality of the situation. We cannot just pretend like the Fed is not there. Uh, they are there. They do strongly influence the, the, the direction of the S&P, and it's down right now. So uh, should be an interesting time. And then the day, you know, the, there's all these reversals that happen the day of the Fed, the day after the Fed. So it should be more volatility coming down the line here for sure. Well, whenever you see a bond market that moves six, seven thousand dollars $7,000 in an hour or so, uh, that is total fear because that bit market is so much bigger than the stock market. Those are major players out there. Not that the stock people aren't major players, but these guys are swinging big bucks. And, oh, uh, that's abso abso six, absolutely. You know, and they, and they uh, got, you know, sorry, go ahead. They, they uh, When we got into the Memorial Day holiday, what was interesting is they got ahead of, remember, they're trying to get ahead of the quantitative tightening. So, uh, you know, this bond selling that's coming in, a lot of this is anticipation of what the Fed is doing, and then the Fed is going to be starting now. So that, that plays a big role into it, the psychology of it, that people want to be ahead of this. Stay with us. We got Shane Smolian, wolftrader.com, coming up next. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hey, we're back, folks, speaking with Shane Smolian, the WolfTrader.com, and we're now talking to uh, Mr. Shane Smolian about the gold market. Thanks, Larry. So I, you had a guest, <clears throat> I was taking some notes, you had a guest ask about gold. So I just wanted to give a, a little a short-term update here on the gold. So this is gold miners. This is one of the markets that we track on the ETF services. It does really well with the Fed juice here. These are the red arrows. But this is just went into a buy yesterday, and, and you can see down here – uh, at the bottom, there's a couple of these cycles that are coming into peaks here. So here's the double lunar cycle here. Here's the four to six day cycle here. Both of these are coming into a high around 617. Now, the Fed meeting is going to be on 615, and we know that there's a lot of volatility there. So uh, that's that's an interesting thing to look at here. So maybe gold tries to get a little bit higher here in the next few days. Uh, there's I'm going to talk about this this weekend. There's a, there's a seasonal high coming up at the end of the summer. Uh, but ultimately, I think gold is in trouble. Uh, now, people have brought up the point that gold denominated in the pound and other currencies are doing well, which, which is true because the, the pound is getting weak and the dollar is getting strong. But ultimately, I think gold is going to be have issues. I talked last in the last web last show actually about how I felt that gold was going to be coming down into this uh, 1100 to 1000 area in the next probably the next three years. <laughs> Uh, and so I started looking at different ways. The first way was this divergence. Uh, but the, sec the second way was looking at um, the Jupiter cycle, which is a 12-year cycle. So I did this last week. I'll, I'll kind of touch on this again about gold. Now, most people think of gold as their old, reliable, friendly dog, like old yeller. Uh, but gold is, is, is gold old yeller or is gold Cujo? And it really depends on the situation. I know that long-term gold continues to rise, but if you know gold can have vicious bear markets that go on for decades. And so we just have to understand this, that uh, gold doesn't have to go up just because there's a crisis. Uh, so the Jupiter cycle here is approximately a 12-year cycle. Uh, it measures the effect in each zodiac sign, but don't think too much about the zodiac sign. It's really just the position or the degree that it is like a clock uh, as it moves around. So it's just a cycle. Uh, it measures, we can measure major peaks and troughs, and we can also measure divergences. So divergences are very important, Larry, because that gets into that high translation concept. If something is negatively diverging, it's having a high translation, and it's actually falling before the cycle peak. So this is an example. This is going back. This is a heliocentric uh, Jupiter cycle going all the way back to the 1920s. Now, this is gold. I, download, I, I bought this data. It's like a monthly data, and I put it in real, it's put it in real terms. But you can see there was a long period here. Uh, going in up to the late 1970s, where gold was very, very, very friendly. But then we had this huge bear market here from 1980 all the way down to 2000. Um, that's almost 20 years. So, you know, if you if your time horizon is 40 or 50 years, then by all means, you know, gold <laughs> will probably be higher. But we have to understand that, you know, when you're sitting on gold and it's going down for two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight years, 
that can be very wearing. So I, I just want to kind of point some of this this out. So this is the Jupiter cycle here. Uh, go, I'm gonna, I, I did decade by decade here. This was 1970 to 1980. And you can see here, this is when it's our friend. It's old yeller. You know, it has a little bit of a pullback here until 76. But for the most part, it's going up. Uh, this is also when we it, gold was still more linked to currency. I know we started decoupling it to this period, but gold was more linked in this. There were still countries uh, associated with it. People still thought of gold in terms of money. So it was much more uh, sensitive to inflation back here. Uh, but when we get back, when we get into the 80s, you can see that um, gold turns into Cujo again. Gold starts to have this big decline. Uh, now, notice down here with the Jupiter cycle. Actually, let me go back to 1970. You can see here that this uh, gold at the top here actually follows the Jupiter cycle very nicely here. So at the bottom, here's the Jupiter cycle. So here's this is gold at the top here, and this is the Jupiter cycle down here. So gold has done a very good job of tracing this out. We have about nine of these cycles in. And then during the 1980s here, uh, you can see that gold uh, was falling along with the Jupiter cycle. So it's been following this pretty well. Now, there are times when it, it doesn't always follow this. Of course, it can diverge positively and negatively. But for the most part, when this Jupiter cycle fell, gold fell also. So the Jupiter cycle here has two important peaks that we look at across 12 years. This is the first peak here. This is the first peak here. And then there's a second peak which is actually three domed peaks like this. It's like a triple high, and then it heads lower. So right now, in terms of where we are, we're right here. We're right on the, the tip of this next decline that should take us down uh, to 2024, 2025. I'm going to do another look this weekend at the Saturn cycle, uh, but that's also showing a bear market is coming for gold. Uh, if we go into 1990, it's just more kind of more of the same. 19, the 1990s uh, was much more devastating for gold. Uh, but and you can see down here is the Jupiter cycle. And I'm going to fast forward a little bit here because I know we have time constraints. Uh, but this no, is going we into. No, plenty of time. Okay. So this is going into the, uh, this is the 2000 to 2010. So this is dealing with, this is the Lehman. This is the, the Great Recession into here. And you can see here that uh, here's the cycle here. Now notice this was an interesting situation here. This was a situation where the cycle was falling and gold actually diverged away from it. So it, it has shown the ability to do this. But I talked before about how there was two very big changes uh, in terms of gold. The first one is uh, dealing with the concept that it, uh, of QE. Uh, and so this is what happened during QE. So once QE be begins as this new, the new norm in terms of monetary policy, it's, it's moving us away from any concept of gold that the Federal Reserve can just print money. That's the first thing. The second thing here is dealing with Bitcoin. So this is the other big change here. So you started to see, I think gold went through two major shifts here. Uh, and so gold does run up here into COVID uh, during this crisis a little bit, okay? But ultimately it starts to fail into here. And why does it fail during the highest inflationary period since the 1980s? Mm -hmm. I think because the role of gold has changed. So uh, this oh. this is something that I think has changed what gold is, how we should look at it. Now this is this is the actual graph here that I, that I wanted to show. This is showing going from where we are now uh, down here. This is gold up here. This is the this is the Jupiter cycle down here. We are just coming into this next leg down on gold, and I think that's going to carry us down into this 2024 2025 area. And I showed this on the divergence. I think that's going to take us down to probably somewhere between 950 to 1100 on gold, but ultimately. You know, is gold going to be old yeller for us again and just be the old reliable? We can just put our money there and, and walk away. Or is it going to be Cujo <laughs> and come down and terrorize everybody uh, and everybody's kind of confused about it? I mean, I, I know it's confused a lot of people, uh, but I, I think that this is a translation. OK, what what Stan is mm. talking about, the fact that why didn't gold go up during the greatest inflation since the 80s? Because it's trans, it's having an early translation here. In other words, it's diverging negatively. In other words, this these were supposed to be cycle peaks here, and gold is already falling. So I think this is inflated gold. I think this is as high as it's going to get. And the big test that we're going to see, I'll talk about this on Saturday. Uh, we do we do have a seasonal pattern in gold, which gets really strong in like July and August. Like this is like the seasonal pattern. So if gold fails to really rally 
this is going to be the big tell here in the next few months. Gold really needs to start getting strong in the next few months or it's going to have problems going forward based upon these cycles and, and everything that I'm seeing. Wow, this is good stuff. Can you stay with us, please, for another Absolutely. session here? Absolutely. Shane Smolian, folks, wolftrader.com. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Okay, we're back, folks, speaking with Shane Smolian, thewolftrader.com. If you want to continue, young man, and please leave a message, uh, <laughs> leave a notice where the folks can reach you, please. Sure. Uh, okay, very quickly on this gold situation. So I think this is inflated gold. This is in real terms, by the way, too. That's why this is actually coming down a little bit because it's taking into account the inflation. Uh, but, you know, we're, we hit 8.6% today in the inflation reading. Uh, I think that will come down. Okay, uh, Shane, we've got a caller yeah. on the line. You want to let's take this call coming in. Sure, absolutely. Go ahead, ask your question to Shane, please. Oh, okay. Uh, hi. Uh, good, uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Pesvendo and Shane. Uh, Hello. Thanks for picking up my call. Uh, just want you talk about Shane talk about this uh, goal, and uh, I'm thinking that uh, I, I look at the money chart that's shown by uh, what you call Shane. In fact, it seems that uh, from the money chart, there exhibit a, what I call the cup and handle. With that, 
you know, the target of gold is, you know, on the longer term basis, it could reach around 2005 to 2008. I'm not sure whether I'm correct because I'm not an, what you call an uh, uh, expert or I don't understand anything much about the financial astrology. But I'm actually uh, what you call uh, analyzed based, more based on the technical analysis part. So I, I'm not sure uh, uh, your, your comment about that, um, Shane. Well, a cup. You're talking about a technical cup and handle breakout pattern. Is that what you're saying? Yes, correct. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm talking about the technical uh, cup and handle. So, is there any conflict between these two? Well, I'm not looking at the technical uh, formation of the chart. I'm looking at the the planetary cycles, and I'm starting to look at the fundamentals too. And so, I so. In terms of the cup and handle, I can't comment on that. But what I can say is, if inflation is okay. 8.6% right now, I think that if it come and it's going to come down, but if it comes down to five to six percent, I think that's really going to have a, a negative effect on gold. Uh, I think this is okay. inflated gold. I think we're looking at inflated gold. Uh, I'm going to talk this weekend about it. So if you want to come to the webinar, I'll take a look at the cup and handle, and uh, sure. we can talk about I, it. I would like to yeah. come too. Yeah. Yes. All right. Thank, thank you very much. Thanks for, thank you. Thanks thank for you calling in. Thank you. See you on the flip side, boys and girls. May God Thanks, bless. Thanks, everybody.